something like the series expansion, so they meant the Taylor series expansion about, uh, in this case, d equals zero. So we can write out what this looks like. So it's one over four d squared minus three d plus nine. The book factored out a nine. I don't think we necessarily need to do that, but we'll just follow along with the book. Even though it's going to give us fractions right away, we're going to get fractions no matter what. So the book also reordered it and put the smallest degree term in the front. And so you factor out that nine right there, that negative three turns into a negative one third, and then that four turns into four nines. So I factor the nine out by unmultiplying or dividing by nine. So what we're gonna do from here is Taylor series expansion. You have to pick a value. Normally you're picking an x value to expand around, but here you're picking a d value to expand around. So we're going to pick d equals zero. So that, I think usually we've used the letter a for that. So this is basically our a value. We're gonna expand around. So what in the world does Taylor series look like? So here's our function. I'm gonna call this f of d so that it uses similar uh, notation to what we're used to. So Taylor series of f of d um, about d equals zero. So what does this look like? So it'll play Taylor series. So it's f prime of zero plus f prime, uh, not f prime of zero, f of zero plus f prime of zero times d minus zero. And the first one's over zero factorial, this is over one factorial, plus f double prime of zero, d minus zero squared over two factorial. And if you need to go for a third term, it'll be f triple prime of zero times d minus zero cubed over three factorial. So this should be familiar from the Taylor series in Calc 2. So this is a Taylor series expansion. And of course it keeps going etc, etc. Did I get that right? The only thing I'm questioning is the factorial. I think that's how the factorial works. You go zero factorial. It matches the derivative you're taking. So you got zero factorial, zero derivative, one factorial, one derivative. So I need to get the derivative, unfortunately the derivative of f of d. So this is some horrible notation but that's what it would look like. We're gonna do a d derivative <laughs> on our f of d. So I have a feeling there's a shortcut that I don't know about, and that shortcut is uh, probably useful in this form right here. I'd rather take derivatives in the original form, which is right at the top middle of the screen there. I'd rather take derivatives of that. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and use that form instead.
So it's a little bit strange you're taking derivatives of something that itself is a differential operator. But don't think about that part, just focus on taking the derivative. I could avoid the quotient rule if I rewrote it as uh, this polynomial to the negative first power, and I could just do a product rule instead, or a chain rule. But I'm going to leave it like this and just go quotient rule. So derivative 1 is 0, uh, so it's going to be 0 minus 1 times the denominator. No, times the derivative of the denominator. Wow. 8d minus 3 divided by denominator squared. All right, any questions on that? f prime of d. That's just regular quotient rule. Now I need to get f double prime of d. So go ahead, uh, actually, let's write this in a slightly nicer form. We have negative 8d plus 3. So go ahead and take the second derivative. So take the derivative of the. <coughs> and we'll see who's faster at the quotient rule. So before we do anything else in this form, let's cancel a little bit. So I did some fancy canceling right there in the green marker. So there was the same factor in both terms in the numerator cancels also with one in the denominator. Normally I would factor those out and then cancel the factored versions, but I don't feel like rewriting this so many times. So that's f double prime of d. Good thing we don't need to go triple prime. That was rough enough right there. So we need to plug in 0 for all these derivatives now. So I need to know what's f of 0, f prime of 0, f double prime of 0. So we'll start with the easy one. Somewhere around <coughs> here. So f is, I'll use that version right there on the upper right, 1 over 4, 0 squared, minus 3 times 0, plus 9. So f of 0 is 1 ninth. And now we need f prime of 0. So 
So there's f prime. It'll be 0 plus 3 over 0 minus 0 plus 9 squared. So that is 3 over 3 to the 4th, which is 1 27th. And last up, f double prime of 0. That's negative 8 times 0 minus 0 plus 9 plus negative 3 squared times 2 divided by 9 cubed. So let's factor out a 9 in the numerator. Because it's negative 8 plus 2 over 9 cubed, negative 6 over 9 squared, it's negative 2 over something, 27, I think the book said that was 127 though. Oh, yeah, duh, of course. We got to divide by the factorial. That's how that 2 is going to disappear. So we're just getting the part of the coefficients. The other part is divide by the factorial. OK, so we got 1 ninth, 1 27th, negative 2 27 So we're going to take that back up to our Taylor series, where we have no room to write. Uh, All right, let's just rewrite that t of d then. I'll write that down here. t of d. f0 over 0 factorial plus f prime 0 d minus 0 over 1 factorial plus f double prime of 0 d minus 0 squared over 2 factorial. So f of 0 was 1 ninth, and 0 factorial is 1. f prime of 0, 1 27th, divided by 1 factorial is 1, times d, plus negative 2, 27th over 2 factorial, which is 2, times d squared. We don't need any more terms. So we got 1 ninth plus 1 27th d. That negative 2 cancels with that divided by 2. So it'll be minus 1 27th d squared. And that better be what the book got. Oh, but yeah, they factored the 9 out. So they got 1 ninth plus 1 third. Yeah, I'll just factor the 9 1 ninth out, and then it'll be easy to see. So that is what the book got right there. OK. <coughs> so in, that, in the book, this is referred to as where this is a series expansion of the inverse operator obtained by ordinary division. So that's what this sentence means, what we just did. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. 
Okay, so it's not the full Taylor series, but this is the first three terms. Okay, so after all that work, we're going to go and drop this. Uh, this is our P inverse of D. We're going to put this into the original, well, not the original, but I think the second, maybe the second line that we did. All right, up. Well, we didn't even write, I guess I must have erased that line. So let me rewrite. Here's our original problem or at least the problem rewritten with our operator. So I'm going to rewrite that. PD of Y equals 5, was that 5x squared? So that's the same as Y equals P inverse D 5x squared. And the good news is we know P inverse of D finally. So we can take that P inverse of D and drop it in where it belongs, right here. So now the easy part, just apply this operator to 5x squared. And I always start with the low power derivatives and then I kind of work my way up so I don't have to think about taking two derivatives in my head. So I'll have the derivative written out already. And just be a little careful in the off chance that you're missing a term. So if it was, so this is not our problem, but if it was uh, d plus d cubed, you may not see a d squared. So you want to be careful if there's a missing term. Don't let that throw you off. So you'll need to compute every derivative, even if it's not a term in there. All right, that is what they got in the book, so we must be right. It's example 25.33. Three. They write probably the absolute minimum amount of detail to be considered a solution in the textbook. So the main part of the problem, which was inverting the operator, was completely glossed over. So why did we stop at the second term? Obviously, Taylor series, there's a third term, fourth term, fifth term. The reason is we're applying it to 5x squared. So what is the third? No matter what coefficient is in front of d cubed, what would you get if on the third derivative? Zero. 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 So whether it was 0 d cubed or a million d cubed, you get the same thing. So it does, I, I don't need the d cubed term to apply it here. And the same thing, d to the fourth, I don't need d to the fifth. So that's why we got to stop here. So two things you should be wondering. One of them is, well, what happens if there's something like a sine or cosine that doesn't disappear? This obviously won't work because you'll need to compute the infinite Taylor series. So that's not going to work for us. The other issue is, which is way more subtle, I chose to expand around 0. That was a choice. When is it not okay to expand around zero? Think about what type of rational function would not be okay to expand around zero. If what? Well, we definitely had, so we have, we have a polynomial in the denominator somewhere. Yeah. So if our original p inverse of d better not have a vertical asymptote at the value you're going to expand around. So what happens if, what, how would this polynomial look different if it had an asymptote at d equals 0? So there'd be no, not, or no constant term in general. 
So if there's no constant term, you can't expand around zero. So that's the next thing we'll look at. What do you do if there's no constant term in your operator? At least I think that's the next thing we look at. This, by the way, is in my book where I can see that I read this area a lot more than a lot of the other areas because it wasn't easy to read through this. So let's deal with that problem right now. <coughs> so if P of D looks like this, everything starts looking good. A N, D N, A N minus one, D N minus one, dot, dot, dot. But your last term, is a to the r, d to the r, where r is not 0. <coughs> so r is greater than 0. Well, what algebra can I do? Let me write r greater than 0 somewhere else. All right, what algebra can I do here? You can say my favorite f word. What can we factor? Coefficients might be. Who knows what those a coefficients are going to be? What can I factor though? So I can pull out more than uh, one, however many d's. So if it r is three, I can pull out d cubed. If r is ten, I can pull out d to the tenth. So whatever, this is the minimal uh, order of d right here. So all the other ones have more uh, powers of d. So we're going to factor that out. So this looks like d to the r times, now you have to be a little careful with the powers. What is the power of the first term here? Minus r. So the m minus r. So we got r out of there. Make sure your r's look like your n's. And the next one will look even uglier, except just follow the pattern. You could either write as n minus r minus 1 or n minus 1 minus r. Plus, now the last term is a to the r. Okay, so that was just algebra, not too bad. So we're going to write the inverse as the reciprocal. So it's 1 over all this stuff. I'm just going to shortcut and just write the first and the last term. We know what it looks like. All right, algebra, just algebra, I can multiply this way. So the good news is the second term has a constant in there. So I can do that Taylor series expansion right here. How can I deal with the first term? What is the inverse operator of d to the r? d to the minus r. And that's one of the only operators you can just invert right away. So that means take r antiderivatives, but throw away your constants that you're going to get. So that's d to the minus r times, unfortunately, you still have to do that uh, inverse. You have to invert the second operator using a Taylor series. And you can use the d equals 0 because we got that uh, constant term at the end. We factored out all the d's that we needed to so that we don't have a d in the last term. So it'll just be a constant. 
So that is P inverse of D. So we should do an example. So y fifth derivative minus y third derivative equals 2x squared. <coughs> so step one is write down your uh, operator. It should be pretty clear what that will be. So it's pretty easy to factor the d cubed out of this one. <coughs> p inverse is 1 over d cubed d squared minus 1. So that will be d to the negative 3. So I think the ex Taylor series expansion is an important skill to know. And to practice, so I want you guys to invert that operator right now. You only need to get uh, the degree 2 term because degree 3, we again have an x squared term, so the third derivative would be 0 and every subsequent derivative would be 0. If it makes you happier, you can let f of x equal 1 over x squared minus 1 and you can Taylor series with this f of x instead of using uh, the d version. So you need f prime of x, f double prime of x, and then figure out what is f zero, f prime zero, f double prime zero. And do you want me to use f's and x's? I thought you might appreciate the yes. using the notation that's just like calc 2, basically. All right, so go ahead, take derivative twice, and then uh, plug those values in. Make sure you use the factorials. Don't forget those factorials that jump in. And then try to reconstruct your, your actual answer to this. So technically, x is two different things on the board. If you look, x is our actual variable, and it's one that I used over here for d. So there's two different x's going on. So make sure you kind of partition your space up or something.
I cheated and used algebra. <laughs> so my derivative wouldn't suck. Yeah, this one wasn't too bad now compared to the what, what it could be. Do you use virtual fractions well? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I realized, ah, it factors really nicely. And then those two separate, the sum of those two separate fractions will have really nice derivatives. Well, relatively nice derivatives if I write it with negative powers. Is f prime zero zero? Uh, yes. Okay. And the, f the f of zero is obviously negative one. Yeah. All right. Better not screw that. I hope. <laughs> Let's go ahead and plug in the, I'm going to write the Taylor series of x first, and then I'll rewrite it with Taylor series of d afterwards. So this goes f0 plus f prime 0 um, over 1. Negative one plus zero x minus two over two x squared. Negative one minus x squared. So that's t of x. So any questions on the Taylor series up to two? And of course, I need, I really want the Taylor series of the variable d, so that's minus one minus d squared. All right, so if you made it there, good job. And all we need to do is rewrite our, somewhere up here, we got that. So this is P D Y equals two X squared. So Y is P inverse D two X squared, which is that negative one minus D squared. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Wow. Where did we just drop that? Somewhere. There we go. P inverse of D. So we converted that part right there. So I need to rewrite one quick step. So that's D negative 3 minus 1 minus D squared. There we go. <coughs> Now, somewhere along the way, I think we showed that the regular operators commute. I think that would mean the inverse operators commute as well. But just to be safe, let's not just switch, switch the two around. So you could probably apply these two operators now. The first one's pretty easy to apply. And then you just anti-differentiate twice, three times. And that'll be your y. All right, so moral of the story, calc 2 is hard, algebra is hard, differential equations, only hard because the other two are hard. <laughs> so I'll make sure we don't skip any skill that we learned along the way in calculus class this quarter.